As a Christian female in the fitness industry, I've seen so many women frustrated as they search for transformation through diets and exercise alone. And what I've realized is that God's Word, the most important part of this life for a Christian, seems to be the portion that's always missing from what we're being taught about being fit and healthy. Courageous Fit Female is a podcast for women who love Jesus and want to get fit and healthy His way. Want to seek His truth versus what the world says? Then let's get into today's show. Good morning, it's Jacqueline Castro here. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. Thanks for tuning in again to Courageous Fit Female. It is the morning for me here in Guam. It is Thanksgiving and it's going to be really loud pretty soon. So I wanted to wake up and record this podcast episode for you because this time, this season of the year where there's Thanksgiving, food is upon us. I mean, food is here every day for us especially during the end of the year where there's a lot of get-togethers, there's a lot of food, there's a lot of occasions, we can pretty much label the end of the year as food season. Not flu season. Well, yeah, flu season too is what they say. But food season, but physically to help counteract the food fixation and centering your life and your end of the year or your life around food, we're going to use movement to help you to counteract the feelings that you get from feeling over full. And I think there's no more perfect time than the end of the year when every one of us is centered around food, right? So today I'm going to talk about three different ways that you can incorporate more movement into your everyday. So this is not just the end of the year food season where I give you these tips and you only apply at the end of the year. This is something that you can do every single day. And I'm speaking to those of you who have not yet started any fitness programs, or you're still not sure how to get started with moving your body. And I want to show you that there is a way to get set up for physical activity, physical exercise, and to just ease into the process of moving your body in general. Because let's be honest, when you haven't done physical activity for such a long time, there could be anxiety, confusion, doubt, fear, all tied up into one where you feel paralyzed and you just don't know what to do. You don't know where to start. So this is for you. And think of it more of like a warm up to help you get started with physical activity. Because ultimately, you do want to start moving in a more structured schedule when it comes to exercise. But let's talk about the more important thing here. Because I think more often than not, we as Christians, we tend to look at exercise like it's not really that important. There are more important things in life than exercise. And I think many of us get caught up in the lie, believing that we don't need to necessarily exercise because God knows when I'm going to take my last breath, so I don't really have to put in the time to exercise and take care of my physical body because God cares more about my heart or I'm not going to use my physical body in heaven. But I want you to think about something. Those are actually lies that I believed when I first became a Christian. But as I dug into his word, he gave me more clarity on lies that I have been fed, lies that I have been misled to believing as a Christian. And I got this renewal of my mind. That's what his word is all about, is renewing our mind because we're in the world. And when we are in the world, we tend to fall into the worldly standards. And what I've come to learn is I want to get closer to Christ's standards, not what the world tells me. So first to kind of reframe your mind or shatter the belief that you believe that you don't necessarily have to exercise, or maybe you have the belief that God doesn't really care so much about your physical body as in moving, here's some spiritual thought for you to think about. And that is, we know that God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to the earth here, and He took on the form of a human body. He was in the flesh in bodily form. We we're also given a body. So anything that God gives us, we should take care of it and be a good steward of it. So are you being a good steward to the gift, your body, that God has given you? You know, on my outro, whenever you hear me say for his honor and for his glory, stay courageous and fit, that's not just some tagline. The things we do, say, think, we want to do it for his honor. We want to do it for his glory. Or ultimately, that's what we should be doing, right? We don't move or exercise or serve other people for our gain or for others' acknowledgement or to be in the spotlight or to get spiritual points. We don't do these things for a better reputation for yourself, for your own name, or to even make it your identity. We want to get fit spiritually, physically, mentally for Jesus' name's sake. 
And on this podcast, whenever I say fit, remember that it's not just talking about physical fitness, but fitness from head to toe, from the mind, the heart, toe meaning action. But I do want to make sure that when I say movement, it's not just let's move to do mere movement or to just keep busy, but because it sets you up for what we don't see as significant. And I'm going to get into what exactly I mean by that. So let's just get into the three ways. So the first way is to, and I and the way I broke this up is morning, uh, afternoon or noon and evening hours. So just to kind of give you an understanding of how you can move every single day, I decided to just break it up into three parts of your day. This is not anything set in stone. You can pick and choose if you want, but this is just to give you ideas. Maybe you may already be doing some of these. Maybe you're not. But the first thing is to pick a morning routine and stick with that morning routine. And I love my morning routine. I don't know about you, but my morning routine has been with me for a while now, and it's really helped me to stay moving. And there are so many other benefits to just moving in general. And I'll share with you in just a moment. But my morning routine basically looks like getting up, washing my face, and then I fix my bed. And did you know that when you just automatically, when you fix your bed, that's 80% of your room pretty much. Maybe not physically for some of you, but for those of you who have a large bed, it takes up a large portion of your room. And just to have that sight of a clean, fixed, organized bed, there's just something about that that makes you feel put together. So I fix my bed, I get my breakfast ready, and then I sit down for my Bible and breakfast time. So that may not even sound like a lot of movement to you right there, but just waking up, fixing my bed, walking around to get everything all tidied up, and ready for my Bible and breakfast. It's just one example that you can do yourself every single day, how you can incorporate movement. So I hope you can see it's not complicated. It's not that hard. So if you do not have a morning routine, maybe it's walking. I know that I have some clients that they walk early in the morning, 5 a.m. And if that's something that you're already doing, then continue to do that. Please just be sure to watch your surroundings, especially if it's still dark. Try to go with a friend. Safety is really important. So we just want to establish a morning routine. The second way is to do something that I call a Tabata break. So Tabata is a word in the fitness industry. And in layman terms, it just means that you're going to move for a certain amount of seconds and a certain amount of sets or rounds. And in total, it's four minutes. So four minutes of movement. And I currently have a rotator cuff chronic injury that I'm going through physical therapy for. So I try my best to get movement for my arm every single day. It doesn't, it's not perfect. I don't get it done every single day as I should, but I am using my arm. It's my right arm. I use it for as many things as I can just so that I don't baby my arm too much. My, according to my physical therapist, I should not be babying my arm and isolating it. I should be using it as much as possible. So if I don't do my Tabata break, then I do make sure that I incorporate movement into this arm for everything that I do do. So a Tabata break looks like this. It's 20 seconds of movement, 10 seconds of rest. 20 seconds of movement, 10 seconds of rest. And that's a repetitive 20, 10 on and off for eight rounds. And that's a total of four minutes. So whatever you choose to do in the middle of your day, it doesn't have to be fancy. You could just, you could just use your clock on the wall, or your timer on your phone, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, eight rounds of that. So 2010, 2010, 2010, 2010. Do that eight times of whatever movement you choose. It could be squats. It could be holding a plank. It could be doing push-ups on a chair. It could be doing wall squats where your back is on the wall and where your knees and your hips are parallel to the ground or go as low as you can. If you're not able to do 90 degrees, then just do it right above 90 degrees. You just do whatever your body is capable of doing or how it, however it's capable of moving. So the second one is doing Tabata breaks. Could even just be stretching, rotating your arms in circles, reaching overhead, getting the blood flowing for a Tabata break. And it never fails. Every single time I get in my Tabata break, my body just feels so energized. And you would think that you would need 30 minutes to an hour of movement, but that is not true. Even just doing something small like a four minute Tabata break, it's going to have you feel more invigorated, more physically alive and ready to take on the task that you were just currently doing. And that's the reason why I love these Tabata breaks because it's in the middle of my workday where I'm working, I'm sitting down and not getting and feeling any energy whatsoever. 
And whenever it's time for my little four minute break, I'm so excited because I know that when I'm done with my four minute Tabata break, when I get down to sit again and do my projects or my tasks or whatever my work assignments are, that I'm just going to feel more focused. So give it a try. There are tons of Tabata apps that you can find for your phone. Just look in your app store. It's spelled T-A-B-A-T-A. And the third way that you can incorporate more movement into every day is by walking after dinner. So again, remember I said that I broke it up into morning, noon, and evening. So for evening hours, walk after dinner. Maybe sweep your kitchen floor. Or you can prepare your breakfast for the following morning by setting out your bowls and your utensils for breakfast. Obviously, we have dishes to wash, so washing the dishes, putting the dry dishes away. So I want you to see that there's nothing complicated here. There's nothing big here. These are everyday movements that you can incorporate into your everyday life, not for just mere movement. Again, these are little things that they're going to set you up for what we do not see as significant tasks or significant activities. So let's just start out with making the bed, the example that I gave you. If you're wondering like, okay, Jacqueline, I do make my bed every day, big deal. It's already a part of my routine. Well, great. That is such a good thing. Now, if you're not doing it for the Lord, if you're just doing it out of habit, remember that these things that we deem ourselves with insignificant, we can change that into doing it for God. I think we're just so focused on wanting to do things that are big, things that other people can see that are successful and how the world labels what success is. But what about doing things heartily unto the Lord and not for man, not for yourself? And the second example for the Tabata break, again, we're not moving just for mere movement, but when we change our perspective and know that we're doing it because we love the Lord, we love Him, And we're doing it even if we don't want to. That's a win for the kingdom because it helps with disciplines, which maybe that's a physical discipline, but that ultimately, and here's what I want you to take note of, that it should be helping you to form a habit of being more spiritually disciplined. Because also too, physical activity is not the only thing that requires discipline. Being spiritually disciplined requires discipline. Sitting down every day to read your Bible, that requires discipline. So if you become disciplined in one area of your life, that's not the end. You got to continue building on and ultimately we want to be stronger when it comes to spiritual growth. So if you think, okay, big deal, physical activity, physical discipline, but no, change your perspective and think about how that's going to help you. Ultimately, ask God to help you to use your physical disciplines to get better at the spiritual disciplines. And then the example I gave for the evening, like walking after dinner, sweeping, whatnot, um, you know, preparing breakfast. Here's something for you to think about. When you organize your area evening time, that is organizing for the next day. It is organizing for tomorrow. It is planning and planning alleviates undue chaos with maybe running late to an appointment or just in general having peace because Waking up to an orderly kitchen or knowing that there's breakfast already prepared or even just having bowls and plates out and your placemat. Again, small, maybe mundane things to you and seemingly insignificant, but it's organizing, it's planning. This is what I tell my son all the time. We think that these little things are not that are not that important to us and the eye, how we see it. It's going to set you up for bigger things because the truth is, in essence, you're practicing being more diligent with what you think are small things. We need to break free from the mentality or the lie that God only rewards big things that people can see or God only rewards when you impact tons of people. Oh, only if I had thousands of followers on my Instagram account and I'm impacting people. That's that's when it matters to God. I only have 30 friends on Instagram. No one's engaging in any of my Facebook posts. You just don't know if anyone's actually reading your posts. You don't know what people are reading. You don't know how you are actually impacting someone by posting a Bible verse. But God knows. So what you think as very insignificant, you don't know what God can do with it. And what comes to mind is when they mention the young lad in the Gospels that had two small fish and five loaves. What did God do with it? He took those loaves and he took those fish and he multiplied it. We don't even know this young boy's name. We just know it says young lad. But God can take anything small and work it however he wants to. And I'm constantly reminded by this, that the bottom line is when you give your heart, 
when you give what you have and you let Jesus be the one to use your small movement in big ways and use it for his glory in his time and in his own way, that's what matters to him. So let's just go back to movement, okay? So eventually, if you aren't incorporating exercise and you want to build up to that, but first, if exercise has not been a normal routine, it is wise that you start a habit of moving daily and then adding on an exercise regime. We all know that when you start out with anything new, whether it's a new routine, establishing habits, etc., it's going to require action steps and accountability and creating and building and developing new patterns. And here's the part that we need to remember to do is to put it into your schedule. We need to remember to actually do it, write it out and do it. And those are some of the things that we go over in my Faith and Food Freedom Foundations, which is only $97, ladies, where you spend one hour with me. We do one-on-one coaching in real time. It's not a video. It's not an audio recording. You will have my full attention for one hour, and I help you to carve out a plan for when you're faced with temptation, how to set yourself up for when you face a stronghold, whether it's food or whether it's laziness or procrastination when it comes to exercising. We talk about the spiritual disciplines, how to incorporate more Bible time into your life. But I know that food is a stronghold for many of us, including myself. And so that's why I focus on food and having food fixation and food idolatry and and learning how to work through that with God's word. And of course, if you want to dig deeper, you have the option to upgrade for $297 for the year of 2020 only where we get into the cracks for six weeks together. And this is where and how transformation happens with God's time. Because everything's going to require God's timing. But he just requires that you show up, you step into faith and step away from doubt. And if you want to see what God can show and teach you in six weeks, then $297 is yours. The implementation coaching is yours. All you have to do is email me. Very simple. Today, before my calendar gets booked, And my email is Jacqueline at CourageousFitFemale.com. That's J-A-C-L-Y-N. Ladies, that wraps it up. I'll end this episode with a prayer. And before I forget, happy Thanksgiving. Let's be thankful of all the things that God has given us. Let me pray for you. Dear Lord, thank you so much for allowing me to be used on this episode, Lord, for women hearing this around the world. Thank you for these ladies that have these hearts that desire to get healthier and more fit for your kingdom. I pray a blessing upon them, Lord, that you would convict their hearts, that you would bring them closer to being Christ-like in the way they move, in the way they think, and how they serve others, Lord. Lord, I pray for all your daughters, that they remember to center their lives around you. Lord, help them to remember to be thankful for all the things that you have blessed them with. And Lord, if they're able to use their bodies for your glory by exercising through exercise, by eating better so that they can have more fuel and more energy to serve your people in your kingdom, Lord, to serve their families, to be better wives, to be a better mom to their children if they have children. Lord, I pray that they get better and better for your kingdom and they do it all in your name. Help us to put ourselves aside. Help us to get out of our own way so we can continue to glorify your name, Lord. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, ladies, happy Thanksgiving. Have a great time with family, the people that you're living with. And if you are living alone, then I pray that there will be some way that you can see God's hand upon your life. Let's continue to be grateful. Let's continue to move for his glory. Until the next episode, for his honor and for his glory, stay courageous and fit. 